Okay, welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this Super Nintendo I got off of eBay. Now I suspect this is a one chip 03, and if it is, I'm going to be doing a C-Sync restore and a RGB bypass. Now this unit was listed for parts and not working, so I'm hoping that I can get it working. I hope there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned. But if there is anything wrong with it, I will overhaul this whole unit to get it working. So the first thing I noticed is they taped this bag with this purple eBay tape and it left a purple residue on the console. Now I, I could probably get that off fairly easy. It's just one thing to note, don't tape things to your consoles if you sell them. So I connect everything up and I'm not getting any power so I suspect the fuse is dead. Also the power plug port is missing the post so I'll be repairing that as well. So as usual to save some time I'll remove most of the screws off camera just to not make this video an hour long. So on first inspection I noticed that there is a lot of dust and dust balls in here. So I'll be removing everything, cleaning everything off camera. But before then I still have to disassemble everything else. So as I suspected this is a one chip 03. So this is the last revision of the first generation Super Nintendo. The juniors came after but this is the last board revision for the first original Super Nintendo. So I'll set my multimeter to continuity check to test this fuse and you should hear a beep here if the fuse is working and I don't hear a beep so the fuse is dead. So here's an up close shot of the Pico fuse I'm gonna use. Now this is a 1.5 amp fuse so I'll just trim the legs and lift up the other fuse out and put this one in. So with the fuse in I'll do a quick test and it seems to be good. Okay so now I'm going to be removing this plastic piece that houses the power jack because I have to replace it anyway so I may as well do it right now. So what I like to do before I take these off with a piece of desoldering braid, I like to add more solder to revive the joint just to get some newer fresh solder in there first. So if you clear these holes right, you should be able to separate this plastic piece from the board ever so slightly. Now you're going to have to use a little bit of force to pry up and over these pins out of their holes. Okay, so right here, once you clear the pins out, you can rest it against the edge of the board and then focus on the other side. Now, to pull this plastic piece off, it seems as though I used a lot of force, but in reality, it was, wasn't that much force. It just popped right off. So here's the old power port. It's all beat up. You can tell that the, 
barrel plug is gone and this one is a third party but it works just the same so I'll be replacing it with this So to reattach this piece, it's the same thing but backwards. So just take your time, put these pieces in slowly, and you don't want to lift up too much here, just enough to get the two pins to seat in their position, and you're done. Okay, finally, time to test. It works. So I do the burn-in test, everything passes, and there's no graphic anomalies. One thing I noticed is it's very finicky. The car connector is very dirty, very loose, and just a subtle touch will freeze the cart, as you can see right here. Okay, before I replace this whole cart connector, I'm going to make sure to clean it really good and hopefully that will fix the problem. If not, I'll take this card connector off a donor board. So after me cleaning about 5 minutes with a toothbrush and alcohol, I finally got the connector to be much more reliable. It seems to not freeze anymore. So that's fine, I'm going to leave this in. One thing I did notice is that the reset button isn't working, so I will be replacing this reset button. So I'll take my desoldering gun and desolder these four pins and the button should fall right out. So here's the new button, I'm just going to put it right back in, I took it from a parts board. So then I noticed in watching the footage back, I didn't actually get any footage of me testing the button after I put it in. So I'll be showing you that at the end of the video. So since one chip 03s don't have C-Sync, you have to restore them with a kit. I got this kit for a dollar on console5.com so if you want to get this kit you can go over to that website. Just to give you an idea of how big these components are, look at this transistor compared to this dime. So to start this I'm going to flux up the area that I'm going to be working in. Now I thought I hit record on the camera and I actually didn't record so here's a skip to me already having the transistor mostly in and I'm just going to heat up the pads once again. But the other resistors I do show. Now this is my first time working with components this small. So for the future, I hope to get a little bit better at this so these components can sit better and I don't have to keep adding uh, flux and doing micro adjustments.
Okay, so with all these components in, we have to move up the board a bit and add one more to this spot right here. So now with the C-Sync Restore Kit put in place, I'm going to clean it up with some alcohol. The only resistor I couldn't live with was this one, it was way off, so I'm going to reheat it and try to set it a little better. And weirdly enough, it just sat into position. So now I'm going to test it with a SCART cable and try to see if this works. It works so the kit was a success. So now I'm going to do the Voltar RGB bypass. So here's the board. Now this was one of his earlier revisions if I'm not mistaken. Um, I got this from an eBay auction. I had one where one of the sellers had discontinued a mod he was doing on a junior. So I took the board and I salvaged it for this project. So to add this kit in, you have to remove these three resistors, R16, 15, and 17. Now the board sits right over these component legs and the component legs stick out a little bit. So I'm going to clip them shorter so the board can lay flush. So I always like to clean my work area before I lay anything down. So here's the board and it should fit on over these pins perfectly. So I'm going to add solder to the left side of this pin. Now I made a little mistake here. I should have worked left to right since I'm a righty. So I worked right to left so I had a lot of bridges and I had to come back and clear up the bridges. But it, if you use good solder that shouldn't matter. And then I'm going to retin these pads here. They were already tinned but since this board is older or has been sitting around for a bit, I'll just retin them. So I'm going to feed these three wires through these holes because this is the RGB lines so I can jump them to the board. Now looking back at this footage, uh, it looks like the last line is up in the air a bit. I did touch that up off camera, I just didn't get any footage of it. Okay, so now with the RGB bypass board installed, I'm going to test it out. And it looks perfect, the image is clear, and so far this whole project was a success.
So here's everything set up, just ready for the top shell. I just want to do one last pass over the board. And it seems as though everything is clean and nice. I couldn't get the yellow off the console, but you'll see that later on in the video. Okay, just for one last reminder, these are the pieces that actually came off this board. I got the fuse, the switch, the power port, and these three resistors here. So here's the unit fully assembled. Now the top shell is a little bit yellowed. Uh, in the video you can't quite see it, but it is a little bit yellowed. Hopefully next year when there's more sun, or when I get more time, I'll retro bright it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. So now here I'll test the reset switch. I forgot to do that earlier in the video and I only remembered right when I was recording this audio. So here's the reset switch in action. Now here's one final pass over the console. As you can see it is a little bit yellowed but it's nice and clean. I really enjoyed how this turned out. Now this is going to be my own personal unit for me. I already have an RGB bypass board but it's not a one chip 03 it's a one chip 01. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more projects, and thanks again for watching.